Hey, yeah, we've been running it for about a week now, and uh, okay, I broke it. <laughs> and, yeah, so we'll get into all that, but game changer, just absolute amazing game changer. That's all I can think of. It's uh, watching this thing produce parts is insane. But uh, let's get into the software and how not to screw this thing up. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to talk more about some of the other things about this machine because we took a lot of time up just doing a quick review back on Monday, but there was two big stories here. There's this, and there's also the website where this sort of thing comes from. I've had other machines come in from them before, but this thing here is just, boom, you know, impressive. And that's geekbuying.com. Yeah, it's a great website for flash, uh, flash sales, they call them. If they have a flash sale, that's when to buy, you know. And they also stock in the U.S., so again, you're not gonna be sitting waiting for six weeks or something for something to show up, at least I hope not. This thing also has Wi-Fi, and I had, didn't even get a chance to tell you about the Wi-Fi, but yes, it'll connect to your Wi-Fi system, and also, there's a phone app which you can install, which will help you when you're running this machine. This is the XSmart 3, and it is the, I guess you could say the entry level for these uh, high-speed printers. They are so high speed, I thought I would bring some product out here that we do for clients and just explain the difference. It's just so mind-boggling. Okay, one of the reasons I brought these out was I just wanted to show you the, the just the boom, the difference. Uh, we originally started making these for the client and we had uh, longer and Creality machines, bed slingers, you know, and each of these pieces would take eight hours to make on one of those machines to have the quality and have it exactly the way we wanted it you know for the client so that was fine this thing came in last week and i started started with just making one of these and these were all made just yesterday for example and yeah one of these now comes out of here in one hour and 18 minutes it's completely finished the product and it's the same quality and the same look and everything as the old eight hour bed slinging machines. Uh, that is such a huge difference that I'm still a little bogged with, you know, wow, how did this all happen? High speed printers are, are just like, I think the bed slingers are gonna be a thing of the past at this rate. This is just, it's just amazing. And the only thing holding me back on this one right now would be the, uh, the bed size. So obviously we're gonna have to find a bigger machine to get in here. So I thought this for real world experience would, you know, it might help you to, you know, consider buying one of these high speed machines because it just changes your world. Here's the problem, my first mistake. <laughs> the USB stick is right here on the side of the machine and you can plug that in. I like working off an SD card and or a USB stick with my files. I can change out my colors and then put the machine back to work from like a, in this case, a USB stick. And I left it in and then I was tilting it over, as you probably remember Monday like this, to show you guys the inside the top. And I bent this all up. So I had to go in and straighten it up and it's working fine. So repair number one. But now I'm going to bring you in here close and I'm going to show you the control package here. That's where the next mistake happened. But uh, the next mistake which is pretty easy, obvious, I guess, but uh, on the Z-axis, when you're setting up your Z, you're doing your little gap between the nozzle and the build plate, your arrows are showing up and down, and what it is is that up and down is actually the bed and not uh, the uh, nozzle, which in a bed slinger, usually you're bringing the nozzle down or something. In this case, you're trying to bring the bed up closer to the nozzle to get to where you're gonna be set for bed leveling, so you're gonna be able to you know, make nice prints. That was uh, the next mistake I sort of ran into. And it's not a big deal. It's just a matter of, you know, thinking about the situation with up and down with the Z is actually moving the plate, not the nozzle. So once you've got that, you got to figure it out. Okay, very good. Now, the next mistake after that, and this is where I really broke things and I ended up taking the machine apart. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to show you this. I'm going to change colors. And in order to change colors, we want to go to load. And it's this case, we're gonna be wanting to unload, but the very first thing, and pay attention right here, uh, I found out the best thing to do is to take the nozzle and run it up manually to 220 degrees. And we'll hit the R, and then it comes up. And the nozzle heats up really quickly, which is great. But once that hits 220, then you press the unload button, not this other button that shows down. You don't want to mess with that. You actually want to unload, which makes sense. But again, 
Uh, looking at this package, for some reason I kept thinking if I hit this bottom arrow button that that's unloading the machine. It's not. That's actually bringing filament in up and getting it ready into the nozzle. So it's kind of a matter of uh, just paying a little bit of attention and thinking it all out. But if you go to change colors, even the very first time, make sure you run, a, if you're PLA, for example, in this case, run about 220 on that nozzle, get it nice and hot, and then do the unload, and I think you'll find that you'll avoid the problem that I did. I ran it at 200, and piece of the, a piece of the PLA broke off, got jammed in the nozzle, it would not clear, and it actually, I got another print out of it before I realized there was still something going on with the nozzle, some kind of a problem. Ended up taking everything apart, which, you know, it's a 3D printer, hey, you may as well get used to it. Took it apart and actually found a little piece of old uh, PLA from a different color that we had run earlier. Still jammed in there, got it out of there, and then after that, I realized I'm gonna have to increase my temperature to make sure that I, I clear the machine. I got, uh, I've got green loaded on there right now, so I'm gonna go ahead, uh, we'll just uh, take the green off and we'll unload. And then it's going to ask you, you know, it's going to mention, you know, make sure that your everything's clear, good to go, and then confirm. Well, if you don't follow the instructions right and you don't get that retraction when you pull back from the filament uh, to change color, this is what's going to have to happen. So you're going to have to, you know, push this up like that and snap it and it'll drop off. And I guess we'll just leave it hanging by the wires. Now we've got two screws right here. You probably should just go ahead and take those off and you're going to remove this hot end here and just kind of slide it down under the way because that's really not what you're after. What you're after is this right here. There are two screws that hold this uh, as part of the assembly on. Now you're going to remove this also. Uh, you're going to have to push this down at the top here and just kind of let's see if we can do this with one hand. I guess I can't. <laughs> yeah, great. But there we go. Yeah, and then that'll expose the uh, filament here so you can, you know, get a hold of it. But what you're really after is you're going to have to take this whole assembly apart, split it in half, and once we get it in half, uh, I'll show you what happens. So as you can see on the screen, it says filament unloading. You want to make sure you have a little bit of pull pressure on the PLA that you're put retracting. Otherwise, this is what's going to happen. This is the uh, drive over top that's going to be pulling your filament in from the top. And what happens is as you're unloading, let's see if we can get this, oops, gotta get the spring straightened back up. Uh, it will curl over if it's hot, which is gonna be because you're pulling it out. And if you don't pull it right away, this it'll actually curl over like this and it can lock on you and you have a jam. And the only way to get this out of here is to take the machine apart, get this apart, and remove this. Yeah, not pretty, but it's just one of those things. All right, now right after that, we assembled and you know reinstalled everything back. There's four screws that hold that assembly into the back of this thing, but uh, in the shot, you'll see that the spring was sitting vertically. It was sitting up this way in the uh, casing. It normally lays down in the casing and behind a little tab that uh, keeps the tension on the uh, wheels back and forth for the PLA. So I don't want anybody to get confused and say, well, the spring was sitting this way. Well, it just so happened that that's the way the spring ended up when I separated the two halves but that's not the way the spring goes in. Okay, so let's get past that. Got a mystery, got a mystery here. And uh, other people with high-speed printers may be running into the same sort of thing, I don't know. This one kind of threw me off. This is a small print, obviously, but it's uh, about nine millimeter hole, 15 millimeter on the outside casing, about two, 120 millimeter height, whatever. It's part of a Christmas decoration thing, and I was just putting this together, and I thought normally, you know, I would run this on a regular, you know, bed slinger but I've got this new high speed printer oh let's see how fast it is this took over an hour and a half and I'm looking at some of the other products that have come out of here and it was like why would this little product like this come out as an hour and a half that's like that's not working for me so I went ahead and I put this also together and sliced it and put it on the LK5 Pro machine which is a big old bed slinger machine slow you know but does a nice job it was two hours uh, that's only less than half hour savings between the two pro, you know, between the two machines. Up until now, I have been extremely impressed with this thing. So the vertical apparently is not much of a gain. That's what I'm thinking. That the vertical climb on the axis is where, you know, with the Z axis going up and climbing each time it makes a a, a change. I think that's maybe that's where we lost some. Uh, we're not gaining as much because otherwise this doesn't make any sense. I would think this thing should have been made a lot 
faster than that. If it was two hours on the one machine, you know, this should have been 25 minutes or something. And it wasn't, you know, it was an hour, over an hour and a half. So uh, if you have a Bamboo Lab or K1, or you've been into some high-speed 3D printers and you know what's going on, uh, we'd love to have some comments below and give me a shout and just let me know what, what, what happened there because that, you know, that's, I find that very strange. And I think it's all about the Z, you know, and climbing up on the Z and that that's where you're spending the same amount of, similar amount of time with the machine because obviously it was still faster, but it wasn't, you know, exactly blowing me out of the water. Not like the other products have been doing. Uh, plastic case on this thing is probably a bit of a disappointment. It kind of feels like a kitty's toy that, a little bit that way. So it was not really too impressed with that, but, but it is a, you know, it still has a great frame inside. It, it has good bones, you know? <laughs> so I don't think the plastic, you know, is, is a big deal. The, wow, now the biggest news. Uh, I'll have a description in the link below, of course, but there will be a coupon code with it. So you can get this right now. I don't know how long the coupon is gonna be good for, but for 379, so that's like, you know, that's probably about as good a price as you're gonna get for a brand new high-speed printer. And uh, if you watch Monday's show from last week, you'll see the, the uh, reviews, you'll get the idea, you know, the size and everything and what you're into. But the whole thing for me is that whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or you're running a print farm like myself, something like this is not only a game changer, but it's even a good backup machine because it can spit stuff out just so fast. So overall, pretty impressed, you know. So hey, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell. We do give stuff away on the show. We've got some stuff coming up, I think, this month. Meantime, I gotta get out of here over and out.